Now we are going to solve our 8th problem and according to the problem, the dependent current source shown in the figure option A says delivers 80 watts, option B says absorbs 80 watts, option C says delivers 40 watts and the last option, option D says absorbs 40 watts. So we are required to find out how much power this dependent current source is absorbing or delivering in this network and the dependent current source we are having is dependent on the voltage V1 and voltage V1 is the voltage provided by the independent voltage source and V1 is equal to 20 volts given in the problem. Therefore, the current provided by the dependent current source is equal to 20 divided by 5 which is 4 amperes. Now before I move further and provide you the solution of the problem, I want you to pause the video and try to solve this problem on your own. I hope you are now done with your solution and it's time to see how we can solve this problem. We know power is equal to voltage multiplied to the current. We know the current is equal to 4 amperes but we don't know what is the voltage across the dependent current source. So our main aim is to find out the voltage across the dependent current source and once we have the voltage we can multiply it with the current to have the power and the voltage across the current source is the difference in the potential at this point and at this point or we can say it is the difference in the potential at this point and this point because this point and this point have the same potential and this point and this point have the same potential. So I want to find out potential at this point and potential at this point and I can have them using the nodal analysis. And in this network we have 1 and 2 principal nodes and I will choose the bottom node as the reference node and this node is having the potential equal to V. And we want to find out V and for this we will assume V is the largest potential in this network and therefore all the three currents will leave node 1 and let's say this current is equal to I1, this current is equal to I2 and this one here is equal to I3. Now applying KCL at node 1 we have I1 plus I2 plus I3 equal to 0. I1 is equal to V minus 20 divided by 5. This point will have the potential equal to 20 volts because this point is having the potential 0 volt. So I1 we can write as V minus 20 divided by 5 plus I2 is equal to V minus 0 divided by 5. V minus 0 divided by 5 and I3 is equal to minus 4 amperes. 4 amperes is the current in this direction and I3 is the current in the same wire but in the opposite direction. Therefore, I3 is equal to minus 4 amperes and then we will equate with 0. From here we can find out voltage V. It is the only unknown and when you solve it you will have V equal to 20 volts. So we have calculated the potential at this point. Potential at this point is equal to 0 volt. Therefore the potential difference is equal to 20 minus 0 that is 20 volts. So we have obtained V and now we can calculate the power 
it is equal to 20 multiplied to 4 that is 80 watts so option C is not correct option D is also not correct and now we need to find out whether this 80 watts of power is getting delivered or it is getting absorbed by our dependent current source and to find out this we need to go back to our basics we understood in the electric power lecture and there we concluded that when current enters the positive terminal the power is absorbed so when current enters the positive terminal of the element and leaves the negative terminal of the element the power is absorbed and when the current leaves the positive terminal the power is delivered the current is leaving the positive terminal of the element and it is entering the negative terminal of the element and now when we focus on the direction of current between the plus and minus then you can see that when current is moving from plus to minus the power is absorbed and when current is moving from minus to plus the power is delivered and in our case the current is moving from low potential to high potential that is it is moving from minus to plus so moving from minus to plus power is delivered so the answer will be current source is delivering 80 watts of power so i hope you now understand how to deal with this type of problems and now we will move on to our homework problem and the homework problem is taken from gate 2001 ec paper and in this you need to find out the impedance in the equivalent y circuit when the delta circuit has impedance root 3 times z and before you use the formula of delta to y conversion i want to give you one very important point according to this point when you perform the conversion of y network to delta network and you have all the three elements having the same values then the equivalent delta network will have the elements having the values three times the values we are having in the y network and there is one exception and the exception is when we have the capacitors you can see in y network the values we are having are equal to c but in equivalent delta network the values we are getting are equal to c by 3 so remember this important point and the opposite will happen when we convert the delta network having the elements with same values to equivalent y network the values of resistors inductors and impedances will reduce by three times and the values of capacitors will increase by three times so use this particular point to solve this homework problem and now i will end this lecture here see you in the next one